I think I know the narrative that the the Earth is warming, uh, that it is due to human activity, uh, that the forecasts are uh, apocalyptic in the event that we don't make radical interventions to mitigate, um, that uh, fossil fuels are not the future, uh, so on. What, what's what's wrong with that picture? Well, you know, it starts, let me tell you some things about that picture that are true. Uh, it is true that the globe has been warming since 1900 or so for the last 120 years, and we've seen about a 1.3 degree centigrade rise in that time. Over uh, what period since? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, since 1900, roughly. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, we also know that humans are having an influence on the climate by increasing the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and that increases largely due to fossil fuels. I think where the narrative starts to become fuzzy, if not incorrect, is how much will the globe warm as a result of those human influences, as opposed to many other causes that cause the climate to change? And second, Will that warming be catastrophic or not? And that latter point, uh, I think, is the heart of the alarmism that is being promoted. And it's just not in accord with the science or in accord with common sense. And then finally, there's the issue of what could we, should we, will we do about this circumstance? And that's a whole other dimension which uh, we can get into because in part, it involves not just the hard science, but values and uh, technology as well. Well, let's talk about the science to start off then. Um, you say that uh, the apocalyptic forecast is unwarranted. Uh, you say there's some uncertainty about the extent to which human activity is, is responsible for what we're observing. Can you elaborate? Yeah. So we should first understand that human influences on the climate are physically very small at the level of half a percent or so. In other words, humans are increasing the heat trapping of ability of the atmosphere because of greenhouse gases uh, by about half a percent, maybe a little bit less. And that half a percent then is supposed to cause all kinds of catastrophic changes. But if you look at how the world has prospered since 1900, so if you compare 1900 to today, which is a warming of 1.3 degrees, as I mentioned, human lifespan has gone from 32 years to 72 years on average. The global economy per capita has gone up by about a factor of seven. Mortality from extreme weather has plummeted by about a factor of 50. Literacy has gone up by a factor of four or something. You know, you can go through all sorts of measures of human well-being. To think that another 1.3 degrees of warming over the next 100 years, which is about what the UN projects will happen, to think that that would derail or even significantly retard that progress just beggars belief. And in fact, if you read the IPCC reports, that's what they say. It's just that when it gets out then to the general public, to the politicians, the media, and so on, you'll hear the words climate catastrophe, uh, emergency, code red for humanity, and so on. And that's just nonsense. There may oh, be an on. issue here. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. No, I just want to ask a question. Yeah. So, okay, there's been tremendous human progress since 1900. There's also been a 1.3 degree centigrade increase in average temperature. If I understand you, you're saying that that was a price worth paying, and that that's an assessment of the retrospective. That is, we went up 1.3, we got a doubling of life expectancy. I'll take that any day. What does that have to do with the forecast of what we can anticipate if things keep going in this direction? Well, uh, you know, the best predictor of future performance is past performance. <laughs> I've heard that yeah, somewhere. Right, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Look, humans are wonderfully adaptable. We have people living from Hudson Bay up in Canada all the way down to the equator in a great range of climates, and the ability to adapt and to prosper. Another 1.3 degrees on average. We've already seen more than 1.3 degrees in 
the mid-latitudes in the northern uh, hemisphere, and we're doing just fine. There are many other issues, uh, some of which you know well, uh, that we need to be dealing with, but climate is among the least of the threats that we uh, are facing. How come then the uh, almost uniform and um, uh, unvaried uh, reportage, you know, the characterization that I'm getting of what, you know, how come the president of the United States is running for office in part and the party that you serve uh, uh, admirably is uh, betting all its chips on climate? So, I, you know, I'd like to quote H.L. Mencken, who, uh, as you know, but just to remind people, was a journalist writing in the early 20th century, very astute. And he wrote at one point, the purpose of practical politics is to keep the electorate alarmed by a series of mostly imaginary hobgoblins so that they can be clamoring to be led to safety. And so, <laughs> right? I, and you see it in politics all the time, not just in climate, in immigration, in um, vaccinations, uh, et cetera. Uh, and, I, you know, some of that is certainly valid. But the political system and the media naturally tend to alarmism because that's what gets human attention. The danger here is that tinkering with the energy system, which is the way we need to uh, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, more than tinkering, actually a radical transformation, will strike at a crucial system for society, one that is the lifeblood of society. And if you change that too rapidly, uh, or change it too much, too soon, um, you can do great damage, much greater damage than anything that climate might induce.